Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Um, this one hour webinar is actually a guided uh, talk and then question answer and actual live real time uh, group transformational session at the end. So it goes about an hour long. Um, I do have a few live attendees, my, my clients and students with me today. Thank you for being here. And I also have created this very much uh, for my YouTube community. Thank you for being here. So you're already included. If you're watching on YouTube, you're here energetically, even though you weren't here in Earth time when we recorded this. What this will be is uh, a half an hour talk on how to change the paradigm of your life and ultimately of the species in the world um, in terms of starting to live from what is joyful, what feels like yes, um, out of the old paradigm of struggle and things being difficult and having to work hard and being adversarial and there's not enough for everybody. So um, I need mine and to heck with you, dog eat dog, um, that kind of world that we've been living in. This is about cha changing into the new paradigm of living moment to moment, day to day, in our joy, accepting our joy, knowing that what we ask for that is joyful and feels like yes to us, we shall receive and to give ourselves permission to receive that and live that way. Um, I'll give a half an hour talk on that very topic, uh, how, how to live there, how to be there, um, how to start constantly accepting for yourself everything that feels good and wonderful and satisfying and true and authentic for you. Um, then we'll have a question and answer with a, a couple of the live attendees that that are here. Um, and please, if you're on YouTube, stay through that, stay until the end, because um, we'll probably talk about something that you'll find helpful in some way in your own life, of course. And then, though, the last 15 minutes of this will be an actual real-time, live, energetic group session in which I work with the collective consciousness formed by the group of which you are already a part, as I already said, even if you're only just now watching on YouTube. It's a live energetic transformational session um, to help you be in a place where you uh, sort of rise up out of the clouds, pop up out of the clouds into the uh, freedom and the sunshine and the air above um, uh, sort of the state that we've all lived in for so very long. If you get value out of this video you're watching on YouTube, please click like, subscribe, leave comments and questions. It helps the algorithm so much. And please feel free to leave a thank you donation. Um, I will include a donation link in the description below. So enjoy. Saying yes to your yes flow. We are at a time as a species um, where, as we've all heard so much, that we are ascending into a higher vibration, into a higher version of what we're built to be able to be, uh, which is love and creativity and joy, um, up and out of lack, pain, struggle, uh, adversarialness. There's there's not enough and uh, dog eat dog and get mine um, and oh, well, you don't have yours, that kind of adversarial, uh, it's it's all about me and, and we're, um, we're in conflict kind of thing. Um, though all those types of things are very third dimension and that's what we've been living living in as a, as a species for a long time and learned a lot from it. We, we've, we've all learned so much from being in the physical and in the third dimension. But we're at a time when we're literally ascending and we're in a paradigm shift and we're part of the paradigm shift and it's our job it's our it's what we're here to do to evolve into to to be in that paradigm shift and the most out of the most key huge part of being in that new paradigm is accepting flow and 
and what is joyful and what feels good, what feels expansive, what feels supportive and loving, what what nur nurtures and nourishes us so that we can blossom and bloom and 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 we flow so we uh so we help others to to blossom and bloom it's a flow of joy and creativity um with none of the limitations of of lack and that lack and adversarialness and pain and struggle and loss so i i'm the reason i'm saying that right off the bat is and, and it kind of doesn't matter what order I bring up some of these ideas, but the reason I'm saying that is it is not pie in the sky or unrealistic to talk about living in our joy and in our in our yes flow. And we'll talk about what that means in more detail here. Um, it's what we're built to do. It's what we're built to evolve to. Um, and so, so the next thing I'll bring up is, um, because it's one of my favorite quotes, uh, in, um, autobiography of a yogi, uh, Paramhansa Yogananda was, uh, writing out, he, he, he'd been an ascended master really since he was a child. Um, and, and he was, he was a child and, and had some child, childish, uh, experiences, but he, he really came into this as an, an ascended master. And from a very young age, he realized that whatever he asked for, he, he would he would get. And he's and and he tells a story in, in that book of how when he was a kid, they have a, a game they play in India with kites where they fly kites competitively with each other. And they actually glue slivers of glass to the kite strings and kind of have duels to see who can cut the other person's kite string. And he was playing that with his sister and he asked for his kite string to cut his sister's cat's kite string. And of course it did right away. But what he said is, isn't it wonderful how divine mother always gives me whatever I ask for? Um, and that wasn't the only example of all the times of what he asked for just, just came into his experience. Isn't it wonderful how divine mother gives me everything I ask for? Gives me whatever I ask for, um, and in, in in the Hindu religion, um, it, it, they do tend to talk about the source, God consciousness, source, our source, your source, my source, as mother, because it is so so nurturing and giving um, and uh, nourishing to us. Um, Quan Yin, which is one of uh, one of the oracles of of this um, divine truth. Um, says that motherhood is is more a better descriptor of the god energy because it is so nurturing and loving and supportive of us of well of everything it creates so instead of divine mother i i kind of think of that sentence a lot myself but in in terms of isn't it wonderful how source produces everything i ask for isn't it wonderful how source just gives me and manifests whatever I ask for? Uh, and I actually go ahead and say that to yourself right now. Kind of repeat that back and see if you don't feel an instant change. Isn't it wonderful how source just manifests whatever I ask for? That's so important because it's true. Whatever we're asking for, consciously or unconsciously, deliberately or not, we are we are receiving and getting. And and the more we understand that we're getting what we ask for, and that we'll get we will get what we ask for, we start becoming more aware of what we're asking for. And the thing is, is that we we have to learn. We're at a point now where we're ready to learn and understand. It's we're allowed, we're meant to ask for what is joyful and satisfying, what feels like yes. What, what is, what just feels like this is, this is right for me. It feels wonderful. It feels expansive. It feels freeing. Um, I feel like my true self. I just feel blissful. I just feel good. I feel like creating. I feel, um, I feel like I can create anything I want to create. And I'm not just talking about automobiles and paintings they're talking about life quality about experiences in life um when you start realizing that you will receive 
whatever you ask for, knowing that you will receive it, you start becoming aware of what you're asking for. Um, you start um, thinking even bigger than yourself, past the pink Cadillac or past the earache or whatever. And, and we start thinking in terms of um, asking for everyone to um, start loving and supporting each other and being more respectful of each other and caring about each other's welfare and wanting to lift all boats instead of mine, I have mine and to heck with you and you're the enemy kind of thing. Um, we start we start realizing that we're creators on a vast level, um, not just by our, not just in our own experience, but with, with what we co-create because as we ask for, with knowledge that we shall, that we're receiving, the, this peace and um, um, harmony and working together and cooperation and everybody for everybody instead of a danger to everybody else, that other people feeling the same way, we actually create that as a world. So it is it is safe. Um, a, a, an important thing to do with, with this um, saying yes to your yes flow is a body in motion stays in motion. If you are in the flow of saying yes, to yourself for what you need, what, what you desire, what you need, what would be most joyful to me today, this minute, right now, today, um, for the rest of my week, or what would be most joyful to me in this situation, or what would be most joyful to me going forward as far as where I live, how I live, or, or my career. We have to start asking ourselves as, as if the answer matters, because it does, what would be most joyful to me? And, and ask for it, identify it, and knowing you're asking for it, and key, be willing to accept it. That's, that's what we have such trouble, have had traditionally such trouble with, because we're taught that, it, that we're meant to struggle and things have to be hard, and that's just how it is. Those are old, old ideas. That's the old paradigm. It is really okay to accept for ourselves what is most joyful what feels like yes that that's a joy there's nothing selfish in yes it's loving it's supportive it's not blocking anybody else from having their yes as a matter of fact the more you give yourself your yes the more you're flowing in that yes flow the more you make it available to and want everybody else to have it. It's, it's a, it, it grows itself. Um, it's, it's uh, viral in the best of ways. So being able to say yes to yourself and give, giving yourself permission to accept, it's really okay to ask this and it's really okay for it to appear in my life, in my world. It's really okay and safe. That can feel like a lot of power to have when you've been told your whole life that, you know, that we're powerless victims and that it's we don't we don't have that ability and we're not supposed to. Yeah, we are supposed to. We're supposed to be aware of what we're creating, what what feels like yes, and accept it for ourselves in loving joy within ourselves and for everybody. Um, and we are built to we're and it, we're really in this process right now. We're here to make distinctions to distinguish one from the other. What does yes feel like? What would feel joyful to me in this situation or for my day to day, um, or or for my career or for my living situation, whatever it is? What would feel joyful to me? And ask for it, willing to receive it, uh, knowing that it's your it's your job. It's what you're built to do, to ask for it and give yourself permission to accept it and, and have it. That is receivership. The distinction is, is that what I want? Is that what would give me joy? Or is that what I think I should be doing? Is that what I think I should want? Is that how I think it should be? Or is that what would give me joy? It's, it's about become, starting to become very aware of what actually feels like yes to us and constantly focus on that and learn deliberately, learn about that, make it our business, make it our commitment, our choice to go into the yes flow.
Bashar, who is who is a teacher of these sorts of things, I, I've watched some of uh, his. He's channeled a channeled personality on YouTube. Um, says it's time to stop wanting and start having. We're, going, we're literally shifting paradigms. Where we've been, we want, it's hard to have, hard to get, we're built to struggle, things are meant to be hard. One paradigm, one set of rules, new set of new set of rules that we're here to choose, to consciously say yes to, to choose, which is I'm willing to have and be in what is joyful and creative and, and love filled for myself and everybody. I'm willing to be in that new state of being. And one of the messages that the Arcturians channel through Daniel Scranton, they said, um, it is the time now for hu humans to stop living in the struggle and the trying to force things and make things and work hard. It is time now for us to start accepting and allowing what we want and need to come to us with ease. It's a yes flow. Abraham talks about, talks about it in terms of swim with the current, Abraham Hicks, I know you've all heard of Abraham Hicks, swim with the current of what you do want versus against the current of what you don't want. It, it's all about the yes an idea or image I want to give to you it came to me the other morning during, during my morning meditation is, you know, you, you can have things that you have identified aren't joyful, aren't yes to you and want to fix them or get away from them, run away from them. And that's basing your, your impetus, your motivation off of what you don't want. Whereas if you turn your attention to what, is yes what is joyful now now you're you're it might be to an outsider so to speak it might be the same motion you're still moving away from what you didn't want into what you do want the motion may look the same but the motivation the impetus behind it is completely different isn't it you're not worried about what you don't want and trying to escape and fix and get away from what you didn't want and don't like you're just going to what you do want, what is joyful, what is yes. Um, which is why Seth said that that really puts the slant on why he wrote, a hatred of war will not create peace. A positive love of peace will create peace. So fighting war and wanting to get rid of war and wishing we didn't have war does nothing but keep us in a state of we have war and we hate it. Whereas just becoming one with peace and going to peace in ourselves and what we're willing to give ourselves, that's how we create peace. It's moving positively into what you do want. Um, Bashar, um, one of his prescriptions for how, how to evolve and live this life successfully in this uh, ascension is um, because we're actually here to create heaven on earth. All the guides say that we're here to uplift and literally create heaven on earth. He said the way to do that over and over is do in the moment whatever is, he uses the word exciting, do whatever is most exciting to you. And when that's not exciting anymore, do, do the next thing that feels exciting to you. And these don't have to be like a lifelong commitment or your career. I mean, it could be a career, but it doesn't have to be anything that big. It just could be, oh, right now. Um, but you know what? Before I do anything else today, I just, I just really want to. I just want to have clean floors. I just want to. That's your excitement in the moment. Sounds ridiculous, but that's that's what feels like yes. That's your open window. That's a way Melissa Joy and, and Matrix Energetics used to put it. You get this, yes, I want to do that now. Do it. The more we follow those impulses um, and, and act on and follow what we feel like, yes, what is yes for us, what that does is it opens up more and more yes opportunities. And it gets us distinguishing and feeling so that we know what yes even feels like versus, well, I, I should do that. Does that feel like yes to you? Does that feel like excitement to you? 
So following and, and as much as possible, constantly just doing what feels like, as Bashar said, our excitement, do it until it's not exciting anymore. Then move on to something else. Um, and do be aware, it can be, if something doesn't feel exciting to you, check, do a gut check. Because it it's it may not be um, when I um, actually did the first version of this last week, I had um, an attendee and Christine, who uh, who's an artist. She didn't want to pick up the art, but then once she actually picked it up, then she really got, she got into it, and then she was just flowing. It was yes, she was not wanting to pick it up, and as we talked about it, what it came out to is it's not that she didn't want feel the yes for art but she there were the there was a block which was well what if what i do isn't really worth something or isn't good enough if i don't do something i might mess it up or something so in other words there was a fear blockage making it what would have been the yes for her um it there was a fear blockage blocking the yes you want to make sure it's not a fear blockage that if if you really just don't feel excited about doing something anymore that it's just really, you just don't feel the, the yes flow for that thing anymore. Um, but doing that ongoing as much as you can every day, all day, following what feels like yes, like your excitement as Bashar puts it. Uh, Richard Bartlett, who was, um, he, he is, he's still alive, uh, created Matrix Energetics, said, now, now I understand what he really meant. He said, become ADD. And I thought, now what the heck does he mean by that? But that was it. That was it. Follow what feels like the open window, the yes, the excitement. Follow those impulses because they are leading you to your true self, to your cr true creative self and your joy and your best possible life. Living your best possible life, making your best possible contribution. Your inner self is always trying to guide you to fulfill your best potentials. Seth said that over and over how we we hold down the impulses because we've taught been taught to not trust ourselves and 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 it's literally cutting ourselves off from our very source our source is trying to show us where our joy and fulfillment is so um another another thing about staying in the yes flow um i have realized is noticing start noticing everything every little thing that does feel like yes that that feels like, yes, um, um, source gave me, gave me what I needed and wanted. It, it's that it, how people say, stay in a state of thankfulness or appreciation. That's what I'm talking about here. It's notice everything that, you know, it may be in times past, we would have just taken for granted. Yeah, that's just how it is. No, it isn't. Everything that actually supports and nurtures you that feels like it, it, you got what you needed and wanted in the moment, even though it might not have been anything real big or that you were focused on as a problem or anything like that. Just start getting in the habit of noticing every big and tiny uh, yes, um, that you've accepted something for yourself in your, in your day, your life experience. Um, that is wonderful. That is what you asked for, that, what you wanted. So just committing to being in that yes flow. Um, I, I want to kind of reiterate, always be asking yourself, what would be my joy right now? What would be my joy in this situation? Um, and then allow it, ask for it and allow for it versus should, start distinguishing shoulds from what would be my joy. Things start appearing more quickly, more directly. And if you start noticing, if you start, if you commit to this, realize it's your job. It's safe to do this. It's safe to shift how we're living. It's what we're built to do. It's what we're meant to do right now. Start going on feeling. Um, in fact, the Arcturians, um, uh, um, I just received a channeled message from the Arcturians through Daniel Scranton just today where they're talking about that. And they say the time for logic is is over now as far as logicking through you you are really meant built right now need to right now be focused on how does this feel how does this feel does this feel like yes does this feel expansive does this feel like it's just it's helping me expand and blossom 
or does this feel limiting, um, negative? It could be it could be information you're taking in. It could be um, some teacher like myself that you click on and they're saying something that kind of makes you starts making you feel like this instead of like this. Listen to it. It's all about how things feel now. We're feeling vibrationally what is true to our true authentic nature, which is source self. We are all, I'll say this for the hundred jillionth time, you and I, all of us are God expressing and experiencing through your unique perspective and set of potentials, my unique perspective and set of potentials. We are each expressions. We are God expressing and experiencing through this perspective individually. So we're here to learn that and to start following what is our authentic true self, vibration of our true self, which is joy, love, flow, lack of limit, no, no limitation, no fear of bad consequences, no fear of doing something wrong, no fear of creating problems because everything is in love and flow and highest best intention for self and all. Um, that's the difference. Being in the yes flow is, is just living in, in the state of literally everything rolling for you, going your way, flowing for you. Dr. Richard Bartlett, who developed Matrix Energetics, uh, calls this state the miracle mindset, living in the miracle mindset. He said, it's like every day is Christmas. And all I have to do is wake up and open the presents. When you are thinking in terms of what would give me, what would be my greatest joy in this situation or going forward, um, you can think of what you'd like and then notice that immediately a resistance comes up of, well, no, I wouldn't know how to handle having all that money or, well, no, I, it, that's, it's, um, you know, getting too too big for my pants, thinking I can ask for that, or or no, um, other people have to work really hard at their jobs and have horrible days. So who am I to think I should have an enjoyable day and have it set up the way I want? All kinds of things. There's something that comes up that that says, yeah, but but no, that that is not yes flow. That is the but the no flow. Um, that's real helpful. Because when that comes up, when you sit with yourself quietly, asking what, what really truly would be my joy, and you start feeling that and feeling, no, I, that's something that feels uncomfortable to me, take a look at why it feels uncomfortable or why you can't seem to kind of get there from here, why you're not allowed to have that in your mind right now or yet or ever, or why that's not possible were possible for you. Um, I, I will say this, I have found there's always an opening if you look for it. And I'll put it this way. Say you, you kind of state what would be your joy. There comes that little, but no, you know, why not? Um, what idea or belief could I change, bring in, that would open up the way for me forward. It, it can be, well, I'm not quite ready to have all that money yet, but what idea is different? Um, I'm, I'm becoming ready. I'm putting things into place so I, that I would know how to handle that money. Okay, that idea actually makes me feel like, oh, whew, okay, now I've got a way forward. Um, it's almost like you're in a black tunnel, what you think is a black tunnel with no, and you're feeling around and, and it just feels like you're blocked, blocked. You can't go forward from here, but then you go, oh, 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 wait, that's a way I can move forward. I'm, I can move there. It's, it's room for movement and it's, it's within you looking for the idea, belief, idea that when you take it in, opens your opens your way, opens your path like into, into the valley where you can see again and have breathing space and room to move. Another really important aspect of, of, of being able to focus in your uh, yes flow 
is to recognize your inherent goodness. Again, you you deserve it. You deserve to live your yes, to have what gives you joy, to live your joy, what feels exciting. And like, yes, I'm I'm who I want to be. I'm I'm the person I want to be, doing what I want to be doing and feeling how I want to feel. That's the yes flow. Being the person I want to be, feeling how I want to feel in, in myself, in my life, in my world, and doing what I want to be doing. That's, that's yes to yourself. And it's our job to wake up and figure that out and give ourselves permission to say yes to that. And that, guys, is actually a, that's a, a choice. We can keep doing it. Nope, got to do it the old, you know, based on the old rules, the old checker game. Or I'm throwing out the old rules and getting on board with this whole new paradigm, this whole new way of being and going forward for myself and for the species. And in that way, I honestly do see this as pioneering in a way. Like, no, we haven't really been doing this before as a species. We've been living the other way. And now we know we can choose a new to say yes to ourselves in this positive, creative, supportive flow of yes and joy. And that is a choice and it's new. So it's, it's we may not 100%, we're not practiced at it yet or practice at knowing what that feels like because we haven't really been doing it yet. So in a way, we're pioneering. We're way showers. We, we say, yeah, I'm showing up for this. Yeah, this is new. And some people might even think I'm crazy. I don't care because I know this is the way to go. And you pioneer and you become a way shower because the more of us that do this, again, we make it more vibrationally, energetically available to everybody. And frankly, other people see you living, living that way. How did J Joseph Campbell and his wife put it? Living your bliss was the way it was put back, in, I think, in the 90s. I almost, um, if you've ever seen a tarot deck, the card, the fool card, it's a, a guy walking down a road, down some country road somewhere with his uh, pole over his shoulder and with his little bag of belongings. And he's just going down the road. Um, and in a way, that's I, I can see that card as, a, as applicable. I don't really do tarot, but what it symbolizes, it's no, it's not old and familiar to live in that yes. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> um, I hope to make it be my normal, my familiar way of living. And here I go. Um, Count, count me in. Here I go. You know, put, put me in coach. I'm ready to go. I say yes to this. So it is a choice um, that we make consciously and we're and the whole world. We're and individuals won't all, all get there at the same time. But it's a choice that we are called upon to make once it's been brought to our attention one way or another. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. How does that hit you about the, the new literally choosing to step into a new new way like of, of every day all all day living from that following what feels like yes and what feels exciting and interesting to you i it really hits me pretty hard because i, I try to do it but then life gets in the way but it's always a nice reminder that i can still do that even though life gets in the way if that makes sense yeah, and you do have a lot going on. I mean, in Candy, Steph has a husband and <laughs> 59 <Seven> kids. kids. <laughs> yep. she has, yeah, she has two young young boys, of all things, and, and a teenage girl uh, and an older uh, grown, but not that grown son. So yeah, busy life, uh, animals everywhere. And um, But within that, isn't there room then to ask for? Isn't it wonderful how Source gives me whatever I ask for? things turning out, you know, miraculously well with, with my husband, um, or one of my kids situations or turn turning out to be for the very best for the way for the child forward in school. Um, yep. you know, like whatever the situation is big or little following the, what's would be most joyful and exciting to you there. And, and even out of Honestly, out of um, I, I used to think of it this way, and I 
hold, still hold it as being absolutely valid. Because, you know, I used to have a bunch of animals, cats and dogs and living in the country. And there was so much to take care of that I actually got depressed. And I started having to go to, all right, I've got all these different tasks and chores I'm supposed to be doing, need to be done, blah, blah, blah. Okay, which one feels like, just in this moment, which one could I do and, and feel, you know, good, good about doing? <laughs> and then start with that one. Like, it's like out of what even looks like a field of not, not, not so great, any choices. Um, you, you know, you can still do the one that feels like it has the opening for you, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm trying to instill in the kids because they want the animals and, but nobody likes to do the chores like in winter time. It's right. cold out. Nobody wants to do it and right. try to find joy in it. And... Or follow what your true joy is. And if taking care of animals isn't your joy, be yeah, able to get rid of them or do yeah. what you need to. Yep. Acknowledge that and, and take do do what you need to do to get things to where it is. Yeah. Yeah. And for yourself as well, as far as that goes. You know. Yeah. I've had that where just like you talked, where you have so many responsibilities that you just don't know. You know, you kind of do get depressed because you have so many things to do. And then I just step back and realize, no, I, I asked for this and I actually do enjoy doing this part of it, but not this part. And it's just getting real with yourself. Right. E exactly. Getting real with yourself, honoring, honoring your truth. Um, I wanted to bring something up that again it came up last week actually and i only there was only christine there because um yeah there not that many people could make it live um but christine had brought up the um you'll hear these sort of what if statements and what if i didn't have a past a past history then what would my present look like that's a really i'm glad she brought it up and i liked so much that she brought it up that i wrote it down that, so i didn't forget to bring it up with you guys today which is in a very literal way, we don't realize it, but we are con we are always creating our entire story and reality from the present moment. That is why Seth sa says repeatedly in his books, the present is your point of power. Your, the present is your point of power. The way you hold yourself right now, what is true for you? What was your upbringing? What were some of the traumas and dramas of your upbringing? What are some of the traumas and dramas of your life and what's true, who you are, who is your family in life, um, the world you live in, what's true for the world and that you live in and the history of the world. You are actually creating and holding that from the present moment. So your present moment contains all possible pasts, whatever you want to vibe, whatever you vibrate with as your past. And it also contains all of your futures that you can conceive for yourself and, and consciously or unconsciously. Because if we have a, a, a thing that we keep thinking, I always get the short end of the stick and I never get my fair share and I'm always having problems. You know, you may not think you're consciously engineering all the problems you're constantly hitting, but yeah, you are with that very constant rule, stipulation, expectation that um, I never get my fair share of things, don't go well for me, someone's always attacking me, whatever it is, I've heard it all. Um, um, you, you are creating um, the events out of that idea, that belief. And of course, there are myriad possible current um versions of yourself there could be a version of yourself right now that's bringing attention to the fact that you're having trouble maybe li listening with with love and flexibility or um or to take your empowerment back um and over your own health or whatever it is um the thing is that we are not victims of our past of our history we get to be 
right this second, right now, who we want and say we want to be. So you can be a person, for instance, who had a very traumatic background. And that can be true on paper, and you can be aware that it's true on paper, but completely inhabit a current version of yourself that isn't traumatized, but has the wisdom of understanding what abused, abusive uh, parent-child relationships or, or neglectful parent-child relationships are. You can have an understanding of that, but not be of it, not have a charge and a connection to it. Um, you can you can just literally, honestly, I said this in a webinar a couple of weeks ago, when you get right down to it, there's nothing true, but I am here creating my reality in this moment. That's the only true what would I like that con to contain? What would I not like it to contain? What do I think it has to contain? Because that's how it's been. Or that's who I think I am. Or that's how I've been defining things. What would I like it to contain right now? And what would I like that to contain moving forward? What would I like to create for myself moving forward? When you let go of past history, like it somehow governs or dictates current and future you, you you turn into kind of a clean slate uh and the the shoulds the definitions and the stipulations and the shoulds get get wiped your slate gets wiped clean so that you can start creating in a deliberate way a self-aware way right now what you just said Steph you start questioning well wait a minute what what do I have going on here let's start be paying attention and sort through what does feel like, yes, like my excitement and joy. And what really doesn't? Now, it obviously, Steph, it could be that there's something that's really good for the kids and they love it. And maybe it's a little hard on you. But, and your joy is for them in this moment at any rate, or right now, your joy and excitement is for them to have this experience, even though it's a little hard on you. I mean, you know, like maybe taking the whole, the whole crew to, uh, you know, SeaWorld in Florida and wrangling all the kids and getting the snacks and, you know, and try and, and all that's work. It's some work, but it might also be a joy because you really want them to have this experience. And that is your excitement and your joy in that moment. But if there's something else that is not your excitement or your joy, yeah, time time to look at what do I need to change here? Blank slate, blank slate, no shoulds. What do I want to create in my life? And allow yourself to ask for and receive what is your yes? What is your joy? What you would like to see? It's always about what I would like to see. Not I have to fix this and make this happen. That's the opposite of joy and flow. That's That's back in the old fear force mode. This is, oh, right. I get to ask for whatever I really want. And, and it happens. What, what Yogananda said, isn't it wonderful how divine mother just gives me whatever I ask for. You start being loving and gentle and thoughtful about what you ask for when you take that in as the, as a truth. It's like, whatever I ask for is going to materialize. So and what I really want to ask for. A little more time for myself, a few less animals. Maybe children who do a little bit more of their own chores with the farm animals. Maybe a husband that pitches in a little bit more. All kinds of things. There we go, we're already shifting things. Let's go ahead and go into a group um, energetic, edit, alter, shift, whatever needs to be altered. And what's really important here is we're only taking in what is most beneficial. We only take in what benefits us and that you're gonna get, we're all gonna get whatever we actually need whether it's even been mentioned or gets mentioned or talked about. Um, just whatever we need to help us 
in whatever we're stuck in, whether it's a physical symptom or it's a family situation or a life situation or whatever it is, wherever we're kind of bump, kind of, I'm thinking of bumping your head, you're in a black cave and you're bumping it, your head against the top, you can't find your way out. Wherever we're bumping our head and not being, and, and needing to flow forward, that we all get exactly the energetic shift and help forward that we need. Shift in under, an understanding, in a way of thinking, uh, just in a way of feeling like energy is plunking us, picking us up and plunking us down in a better place. So um, no need to be frightened about anything. Just you're taking in only what is most beneficial for you. So uh, your big job would just be to say, yes, I take, I'll let whatever changes and energies need to come in. I'll let them come. So first thing I'm seeing is ascension. And this is guided, by the way, um, higher dimension consciousness is the ninth dimension that I know of Arcturian and then the, the ascended masters I, I tend to contact more directly lately. So ascended dimension comes in. And I'm act I am actually seeing opening like like there is a like a black tunnel or a roof the you know, other bumping heads um that were opening. There we go. Um, I'm seeing that like opening to a valley or where oh there I'm open, I'm out in the light again, I'm out of the tunnel. It's the it's it's that uh energy and it's for all of us. For all of us and for everybody here. Um the energy of authentic role, being your authentic self versus trying to fit a cookie cutter role that you you have taken in as projected upon you or the end or you've projected upon yourself. This is whom what I should do, whom what I should be. This is what how things should. It's the shoulds uh, and this and the cookie cutter roles of what you do. Oh, I just saw, yeah, blast it, blasting that apart, literally, like just like dynamite just blasted that apart. So moving into your authentic self out of inauthentic roles. And I'm hearing and seeing like you matter, who you really are, your true self matters. There's some kind of, um, I'm going to say, kind of unconscious, sub, sub or unconscious information um, in, in a sort of a graphic here behind that I'm going to bring forward to where there's a conscious awareness and understanding of something you, you needed, like to have the light bulb of, oh, that's... That's what I've been vibrating with. That's what I've been believing. Holy cow, that doesn't help me. That's a belief. That's a belief I can agree doesn't. It, 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 that's not what I want to ask for. <laughs> that's, that's asking for the wrong thing. Great love for yourself. And, and I'm feeling this coming in from Ascended Masters. Um, an energetic field of great love and, and self-esteem. How beloved and precious and valuable you are. For you to understand that and be aware of it, how loved and precious you are. And 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 that it's that's right. It's like that's not in a taking for granted way, but in a right that's that's how it should be that's that's who i truly am be loved loved so precious and valuable and and i am specifically as being pounded self esteem esteeming yourself what and the importance of what's um joyful and yes for you that's what you're built to be able to be you're not doing anybody any good by not blossoming your true self fully. You're then you're not bringing your true self and your true gifts to the table, to the world, to, to creating the world and the universe. 
and your own life. It's not even a matter of deserving by, by definition. It, yeah, there's, it, it's not even a matter of deserving to live your joy and your yes. It's what you're built to do. It's like telling, saying a, a flower saying, I don't get to deserve to develop my leaves and petals. It's your job. It's what you're built to do. That's what you do. You, isn't it, you, you don't have to deserve it. You are it. It's like that. I'm here. I'm seeing a sense of you gaining a sense of your, your value and that what is true and authentic to you is valuable and important. And for people with kids, because it's definitely it wouldn't only be you. Yes, what your kids need is, is important and it's important to be a good mom and give them what they need their needs aren't the only thing that's important. And these energies come into the group consciousness and they they sift, and sift isn't quite the right word, but infuse into, into each individual consciousness that's part of the group and are you metabolized, energetically metabolized and used in the best, highest way for each individual. They'll be used by each individual in the best, highest way. Um, this particular one that came in has to do with um, really allowing, tr knowing and trusting that your body is perfect and fine. You don't need to impose illness upon it. The, in, in fact, sometimes illnesses and, and actually um, I'll say this, Candy, this is coming in for you. Part of there, the, there is, um, even though you might not have believed this, is an expectation maybe that things go south as we age. Delete out the expectation that we go, go south as we age. You're creating your body in every moment. Your body doesn't have this thing that it's, as we're taught by everybody I know, that, that it just wears out. It's not a machine that's going along and wearing out. Um, we're creating it afresh in, in every moment. We're choosing to be here in it. And guess what? Here I am. I'm creating it fresh. How do I how do I want to create it? Where am where am I blocking? Where where do I have some fear and resistance against the, the world I think I'm encountering? And it can show up in the body. It's a fear and resistance. And I'm told this can this can be useful for the whole group. I mean that everything I just everything I've said is for the whole group. But that one all really did apply to candy and candy in that one moment. But acceptance that um, even though it doesn't always look like it, everything going on in the world is actually everything is just fine. Source consciousness plays out all of its experiences. We see what we vibrate with, and everything is actually underneath whatever looks like it's going on that doesn't look so fine. Everything is actually just fine. There you go. And that's when you raise into a higher consciousness, you can you can perceive that directly. There's some information um, for me up here that wants to come down and be installed into the conscious awareness of the group consciousness. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kind of almost hearing, here are some changes they can all use that you don't even know what they are, Kathy, but here, take them. <laughs> okay. Commitment to moving into a paradigm in which it's your job and it is okay and it is acceptable to ask and receive, to just be in the flow of getting, asking for, and receiving everything you ask for, and for everything to feel good, you as a, who you are, how you feel, what you're doing, it's really safe and okay to accept that for yourself. This is like um, um, giving a permission, an energy of giving, your, giving yourself permission to make that shift. Even though we've been told all these years that that's bad and wrong and that we're not allowed to do that. Yes, we are. We're meant to do it. 
built to do it. We are being called to do it. To accept a new paradigm way of living for ourselves. There we go. Flow. I'm seeing flow and harmony. Like, almost like you've added like uh, WD-40 or lubricant or something. Just like things just flowing. Okay. Um, this is a super energy that wants to come in again. You'll all use it in your own way. But this, you, some of you have heard this one. Um, it's, it's the um, I love you. Period. And yes, I will do this with you. I will do this for you. Yes, I'm on board with that thought with you. I'm, I'm, I see things the same way. Or I love you. Period. And no, I don't see things your way. No, I'm not going to be doing that with you or for you. It's okay to love and still follow your own excitement, your own yes, your own joy. And again, in the example I just gave with a mother, in this case, Steph, because you know, I know she took her kids on a vacation. I mean, you know, your your joy may be something that's a little bit of work that wouldn't wouldn't have been your first choice. <laughs> like if you have a cold and don't feel very well, but your child has their first Christmas play and they're going to be singing a song, it's going to be your joy to get your butt there and attend, even if they have to carry you in on a stretcher. That will be your joy, your excitement, because that's what you want to do. It's not going to be like, well, I want to stay home and have my tea, so to heck with my kid. That wouldn't be your your authentic joy. Um, so you we, we don't have to worry about the selfishness with this love and joy really it doesn't contain selfishness because selfishness has to do with it's this or that that duality that me or you and that's not what love and joy is cooperation thought we might be done there but i'm seeing we're not quite done um awareness and clarity <clears throat> awareness and clarity Come, come in for all of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost seeing like uh, something taken away from your eyes. Just, oh, oh, I see. I can see so clearly now. And with that, very, very related, I'm seeing it's clarification. So the field of, of energetic field of clarification. Um, I'm picking up somewhere, and I don't know if it's someone attending live, someone who registered, or even someone who might watch later, but um, anger at being victimized. We're going to remove that, delete it, because there's a greater understanding underneath it. It's masking, an, uh, or it's blocking, or hiding an understanding underneath it, that you're Again, you're receiving what you are inadvertently or consciously asking for. We, When things are going on that don't feel very happy to us, it's an opportunity. It's not a problem. It's an opportunity to see where we're blocking, where we're saying no to our excitement, our yes. Somewhere we're block, we're saying no to our own yes, and it's coming through in this physical camouflage shadow area as some event that happened to you, or some person who did something to you, or some something your body did to you by betraying. Um, so that that victim is that um, anger at being a victim, it has no reality of itself. It's not true. But underneath it is an opportunity, if you will allow it for yourself, to learn where was I saying no to my own excitement, my own yes, to my own true joy. What do I, what, and where's my opening? What I talked about earlier, ask what belief, what idea, could I change or could I, could I, could come to me that would open my way forward? What idea or understanding would open this up and give me a way forward? 
you would be amazed what burbles up when you ask that question and then quietly sit and let things burble in. Oh, okay. Um, uh, didn't see this coming. I don't know why it's coming in, but this is this is for the group consciousness co collective. Um, this is the uh, energetic super energy of speaking your truth. And in this case, it isn't about being honest. I thought it would be about being honest with yourself about what would, would be your joy. What would be my joy? Now, this is about speaking your truth to others. Um, and this it's something we can all use, no matter what, what who you are watching this back. Um, it's always going to be there that your truth matters. It's just as valid and valuable as anybody else's. And it's, and it's really okay to be your true self and express who and what you really are and how you truly see things and what, what you need out of a situation, what you need to start seeing, what you need to stop seeing. Um, if, if, if you've been going along with something like you agree with it and you don't, there's ways to say you don't you don't agree without being ugly and conf in conflict. There, there's ways to say, yeah, I, I don't I don't quite see it that way. I don't see it that way. Um, I I I think this, you know. Now I I realize there are situations, especially in today's world, where you have to pick and choose whether it's worth it. Um, you know, we don't just have to spew everything we think all the time. But if there's a situation where it's bugging the heck out of you because you're in a in a situation where you're like literally almost almost shoving it down or lying to because lying uh, directly or by not speaking because you don't want to upset the apple cart, there might not to start a fight, not to be in a conflict. But if there's a way in which you're betraying yourself. And making yourself sick by not speaking like your like your truth is valid and matters, then or that you have a right to it, then then maybe you need to speak it. Maybe that's why that's coming up. I'm getting yeah, that's it. And um, moving into the best, most blossomed, true, authentic beauty, true self that you really are. Moving into that now coming into your best true self, true best self. Standing your ground, but also boundary, um, the energy of, of boundary, and not in an adversarial way, but the ability to discern and make distinctions of this information that this person is, you know, either trying to force on me or that I clicked on and I'm taking it in, it doesn't feel like yes and love and flow and good to me. It doesn't feel expansive to me. It feels threatening or limiting or di diminishing in some way. Boundary, a healthy boundary can be right. Every Everybody has their, they're seeing from their own perspective. They have their own ideas about things. I do not have to change their mind. I do not have to agree with them or see things their way, even if I love them. I do not have to agree with them and see things their way. So boundary is I don't have to take in ideas and beliefs just because others around me are buying that idea and belief. That's healthy boundary. Um, or, you know, all the things that are happening in the world and a lot, and some of them are very harsh and very, very ugly and hurt, horrible to watch. And you have great compassion as we should compassion for the pain people are going through but there is a, the element of accept of accepting that people are experiencing what they're experiencing because it's an experience they needed to have that they on some level not consciously are agreeing to have so that they can they can learn and have something revealed to them so it's not for you or me to say what experience someone else should be having or is good or bad. That's not our job. We have to allow people to have the experiences they're having and trust that it's for their own reasons. And we, ha again, have compassion for the very real pain and terror they're experiencing. 
without thinking that it's our job to fix it for them or that they shouldn't be experiencing that. Um, there's boundary and there's uh, acceptance that everybody has their own way and let them have their own way. I'm hearing what am I and am I not responsible for? Well, you're not responsible for what anyone else chooses to learn or experience. And we'll, we'll close with um, two things here. The energy of being your own light. Stop trying to, if you are in any way, stop trying to fit yourself to projections on, of what you could should be or what you should be doing or what things should look like or what your life should look like. Be your own light. You show up as true you and you shine your light and who and what you really are, your true self, into the world. And then there is a, um, lack of better, better word, sort of an energetic vibrational pack of energies that help with expansion and growth and finding your own, your own way through out, out of any tunnel and that wants to just be offered to everybody. And the speaking your truth wants to be reiterated. Your truth, and I'm seeing almost a, an image of like everybody on the planet, everybody has their, their, their opinion and their voice and their experience. Your, your truth is just as valuable and valid and important as anybody else's on the planet. No one's more important or less important or higher or lower than anybody. We're all God consciousness experiencing and expressing and we're equal in our value. I'm hearing I matter. I matter. Okay, let's go ahead and, and close this then for today. Um, let whatever I talked about today, um, thank you, Candy. Um, let whatever I talked about today sift through. So again, thank you for joining me today. Um, if you would like uh, more information about my work and about my classes, visit my website, www.kathyhazeladams.com. Uh, if you're interested in other classes and meditations that I offer, uh, click the classes webinars tab at the top of the page. And if it caught your attention when I mentioned uh, vibrational information and fields, uh, you may be interested in checking out uh, a course that I'm going to be publishing just literally in a few days uh, by the end of by the end of the month, May May 30th, 2024. Um, that's the first course in a series of classes and courses that I'm entitling Awake Aware Masterclass Series. This particular course, the first one in my masterclass series, is entitled Energetic Fields, Vibrations, and Frequencies and Your Multidimensional Consciousness. And it is a four-hour course broken into four modules that are, they are really um, an overview for what I'm going to call the advanced co-creator of exactly what's going on with vibrational information and how we're creating our reality and how to start being directly aware of vibrational information and not just reliant on the physical symbols that we see of the energies that are really at play vibrationally underneath the physical. So if that sounds interesting to you, again, just go to my classes and webinars tab and uh, you'll you'll see the class listed there. Um, I'm going to be clicking the publish button here literally by the end of the month within four or five days and it will be available for purchase. So thank you so much for joining me today and just have a blessed day and live your joy, live your yes flow.